Hey guys, this is Ella Boot, uh, undefeated professional fighter. Stay tuned for my next upcoming fight on the No Limit Show. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and enjoy the show. What's up, fight fans? I recently sat down with up and coming boxing star Ella Boots. She is currently undefeated with a career record of 3 0. Box Rec has her ranked as the number one lightweight in all of Australia. Ella has quite an extensive and storied amateur career. She was a champion in karate before she transitioned to boxing, and that also showed great success with her becoming a youth Commonwealth Games gold medalist. This is her boxing story. I always felt myself as an amateur, I felt like I was more of a professional fighter. Like I felt like I could endure the 10, 12 rounds more so than doing the three rounds. Like I felt like that was more suited to my style of boxing and that sort of thing. And I knew that that's where I wanted my end goal was going to be anyway, at the, like as a professional fighter and becoming undisputed. That was where I wanted to go from the start of my amateur career. It's a fascinating story. It's, it's People look your name up, they're gonna find these things. They're gonna find statements from you over the last few years saying that you know you, you made this move to connect these dots, you know, coming from Canela, traveling to Sydney to train with Johnny, or you, you started in Queensland though, and then you came down south and you said you have these goals of becoming a world champion. You know, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Before you got into boxing, you were a successful traditional martial artist, correct? Yeah. Was this sort of like, was the mindset, did it come from that? Yeah, I, it definitely did because when I did karate, karate, I did karate for nine years and I was competitive in that and I won a few like national titles and things and then my next goal was the Olympics but karate wasn't in the Olympics at the time. So I thought, oh, I'll give boxing a go, see if I can make it to the Olympics you through boxing. And I just fell in love with boxing. Not too much. It, I had my first fight in six months okay. of training boxing. So okay. I actually picked it up quite easily. Um, I found there were some similarities in the way that you process like tactics and reading your opponent, things like that. I found that quite like similar and I could connect that really well. But the hardest part was probably changing the style from being so side on to then coming like into more of a boxing stance. The space, that's yeah, a great and the space, the timing, the distance. I was more like in out, like it was like on the balls of your feet. So you'd like kick in and then like you'd strike and then move out because okay. it's about like scoring a point and then moving. So in a way it was sort of similar to more like amateur boxing. Was it hard for you, this is, may sound rudimentary to the people listening to this, going from karate to boxing, being able to hit to the head? Yeah, yeah, that was a big difference. And most yeah. people don't know that, yeah. but I've sparred at an old gym in America with karate guy black belts, mm. and they wanted to spar Western boxing, and that was the one thing that they would struggle with was having the freedom of striking to the head. Yeah. Maybe talk about that and how you got you. Did you get used to it real quick? Um, yeah, I did find it. Like I found I got used to it. I got used to it quite quickly. Did you get pushback from your coaches, your karate coaches, when you told them you want to go into boxing? Was there pushback, or did they support you? Um, no, they were very supportive. Yeah, they were really supportive of my decision. I was really close with my like senseis and everything, so they had they gave me their full support in that process. Has it been tough since October? Everybody has seen the fights. You fought all three of your fights. Were, were they with no limit? Yes, they have been. Yeah. And you won the fight. You won all your fights. You're undefeated, three and zero. You had a bit of a hand injury in your last fight. Did that happen early on? Yeah, so I broke my hand in the third round of my eight round fight. So I had to fight the rest of the five rounds with a broken hand. That was probably the most painful experience that I've actually ever like been through. 
Um, in life, not just fighting. Yeah, like in life, that was, it was so painful. Were you fighting? Because I watch you fight, spar, I've seen you spar. Yeah. You like you do really well going from ortho to southpaw. Yeah. Were you in orthodox or were you in, what hand did you break? I broke my right hand, so I was in orthodox, orthodox. and I threw my right, and I broke my right hand. To hit the skull? So, or did you hit a hip? Yeah, it hit the top of the skull. Top of the skull. Yeah. Did you switch stances and did, did your opponent yeah, pick it up? Did. Yeah, yeah. I ended up having to adapt, like rather than throwing my right hand straight, I was sort of like just scoring shots to the body, like really light because it wasn't hurting as much. Okay, and, but you knew it was broken? Yeah, yeah I knew. Okay, yeah. there was no adrenaline. That, it was, no, it was yeah, painful. I could feel it. Did, did you tell Johnny? Yes. What did he say? <laughs> He doesn't like me when I tell people this. He said, <laughs> well, it's been almost a year, Johnny. Every fight's a new fight. Yeah. He said, keep punching, darling. <laughs> In typical Johnny Lewis fashion. Yeah. He sounds like an aristocrat, not like a boxing coach. It's so funny. So, adversity in and out of the ring, that one moment was the most. Yeah. How did you get through it mentally? Um, I just focused on what I had to do to get the job done and focus on what I was in there for. Like, to become the Australian champion. So. so the goal allowed you to stay aligned no matter how big that adversity was. Yeah. Maybe talk about that. That's something people could use, the importance of having a goal in relation to staying on track. Yeah. For you, it allows you to go back to the round, your corner at the third, knowing your hand was broke. You have five more rounds and you just maneuver through it. Yeah. Did you learn anything other than, what did you learn about yourself in that moment? I learned that if I can do that, I can do a lot more things than I ever thought that I could do. Like I can actually like face my fears and challenge myself in different ways that I never thought that I could. Um, One of my favorite boxers who retired undefeated, Andre Ward, are you familiar with his story? Yeah, yeah. After he retired, he gave an interview. He, nobody knew. He fought his whole career with a torn labor. So he rarely ever threw his right hand because he, he thought to himself, have surgery, miss a year, year and a half, or not have surgery and hide it. And so he said his experience, learning to deal, fight through that, made him a better fighter. He, he says he, would, he was a better fighter with one and a half arms than he would have been with two. Yeah. Because it made him think differently. Yeah. What's it been like recovering from your hand injury? Um, it was, it's been a bit up and down. Like at the start it was good because I went straight back into training and my coaches like helped me like with my training to like adapt and sort of like train with just the one hand sort of thing. Um, and then there was sort of a period where I was like sort of missing fighting and not being able to hit or anything like that. Um, but then like the last few months it's been really good because I've felt my hand get really strong again. And yeah, it's really exciting to see that like improvement. Is it difficult for you having such a media friendly amateur career in multiple sports? The media, you can find articles written about you. I've probably before 2017, that's probably as deep as I went. But to find fights, is yeah. it hard for you to find, especially within Australia? Yeah, it is. Because I went to see you spar one time, maybe, it was before your last fight, and a couple of the girls, before you got there, had filled me in that you were coming, and they both had said to me, and I'm not gonna say any names, they both had said to me, Ella Boot, she's a beast. So they, <laughs> they were, and, and these are your sparring partners. So maybe talk about the frustrations of that, and that's sort of part of the landscape that your fans probably aren't aware of is, you know, good hand or not, the difficulty of finding opponents within the country. Yeah, yeah, it is really tough. Um, like I've always had to fight up weight divisions to three, Did three, you? yeah, all three of my fights I've had to step up weight. Didn't you fight up three weight divisions though, or was yeah, that? Yeah, I did. I stepped up three weight divisions in my second last, but my second. Profile. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean on the day of the weigh-in, you, you still both weigh the same? Or you never no, so you weigh in three weight divisions less and just fight at the weight that you weighed in at? Yeah. That is why, just so you can fight. Yes. No wonder. <laughs> I mean, what's yeah, people don't understand that the weight classes are weight classes for a reason, yeah. especially when it comes to power. Yeah. Are you able to tell the, is it noticeable for you when you're fighting bigger girls? Um, I haven't noticed it really. Like, I find, I kind of think it's more of an advantage for me fight bigger girls as well because I'm faster than them and I feel that I can handle the power. Um, I haven't had any experiences where I've been hit and sort of been like in shock or anything like that. Um, probably my like uh, like tactics and reading my opponents and sort of like understanding how to beat different styles. 
having watched your three fights and watching you spar, that's exi I would have said your fight IQ. Yeah. That for me, as a fan, spectator of the sport, somebody who writes about the sport, when I see you fight, that's the first thing I notice. And then you you hear about the amateur career, the fight IQ, but you also have the physical attributes. You're still so young as well. I have a friend, she's in her late 20s, she is a MMA fighter, and she was telling me the other day that she's just now feeling that she's getting into a physical peak, her prime as an athlete, both physically and intellectually. When you hear things like that, the room that you have to grow, the career, the goals that you have in front of you, maybe talk about those feelings. How does that make you feel? Um, yeah, that makes me feel like really passionate about the reason why I do it in the first place. Like having those goals and like looking at them every day. Like, What is your reason? My reason to inspire people, be that like that role model to younger girls, um, to make myself and my family proud. Do you, are you the type of person to use negativity as fuel or do you just tune it out? I know some people, they read negative comments or they wear on their shoulder the haters who once said you can't do something so that's what fuels them. Are you that way or do you, what, what sort of, when you're getting ready in prep, you have a fight coming up, is it the main goal of being a world champion that drives you? Is there anything else? Um, not really, the negativity I don't really focus on too much. Um, I think that's something I probably would think of afterwards and like, but I wouldn't really touch on it too much. Like if I was to prove someone wrong, like I don't really, Care if I do them or don't really, but maybe talk a little bit about share with us if you can your upcoming fight. Yeah, I couldn't find anywhere online about it. Are you like, do you have the date, time, place, right. opponent? The date is the 23rd of July, and I believe it'll be in Sydney on a no limit show. Women's boxing, but Aussie women's boxing yeah. who are fighting internationally yeah. and being part of that. What does that feel like? Yeah, yeah it's so inspiring, like to see other like women like striving towards like achieving success in boxing and everything like that. And it's, yeah, it's really like nice to be a part of it as well. And to Do be you feel connected group. to the other Australian women who are building their profiles? Is it a community? Yeah, it is. Yeah, for sure. Like I feel like the Australian girls like all support each other, and like there's no like not much really negativity. If you were to take what you look like in October, your your performance as a whole, and what you envision the performance in July will look like, what are some of the things your fans can expect differently from you in your upcoming fight? Um, more power in my punches. Um, I believe I have the strength to be stopping my opponents, especially at my weight division. So that's something that I've been working on throughout my long like time off and everything to build my strength up. Um, also my like explosiveness and you have a whole team around you doing that. Yeah, Give yeah. a shout out to your team on that side of things. We talked uh, about Johnny Lewis enough. Yes. So my strength and conditioning coach is David Barker. He's been with me since the start of my professional career and I really feel like he's helped my progression in my boxing explosiveness. He's been really like good with um, allowing me to focus on my boxing. So it's been like he says strength and conditioning isn't the main part of what you do. Your boxing is the most important part. So the strength and conditioning is just uh, helping your boxing rather than mimicking it sort of thing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so it's yeah. a Thursday afternoon here. You're preparing for a fight. Maybe end this with what your morning's already looked like. Kind of give insight to the young girl out there who will watch this who maybe wants to become a fighter or have their parents take her to a gym. What she could expect the effort, what does the effort look like? I'm sure you've already worked out, I'm sure you're gonna work out again. It's not even 12 o'clock. Yeah. Maybe share with us your average fight camp output. Maybe from the time you wake up to 1 p.m. Okay, so my mornings, I start off either coaching or I have like the morning off, but I usually am like in the gym coaching or PT. And then I will have some breakfast, have a coffee, have a little break, and then I'll do my first session either strength or conditioning. And then from there, I'll go home, shower, freshen up, do some like recovery, go for a walk, things like that. Um, and then by like 12 o'clock, we usually do our boxing session. So I go into the city with Johnny Lewis and train with him. And so it's really a lifestyle. Yeah, it is, yeah. You choose to do all of this. Yeah, yeah. It's probably the most important thing. Yeah. 
so you you enjoy it. Yeah, I love it. Could you imagine yourself doing anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> awesome. We're gonna end there. Now, the one thing I do. Going, going, going now. Just study, 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 study. Start working with that guy down here. There it is, there it is. There it is. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Now. Go. 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 Go